Your Project 5 assignment is going to be to build a custom bicycle seat, which is commonly known as a bicycle saddle. During this video, I will use the term seat and saddle interchangeably. Later in this course, you will be using your bicycle saddle for your final bicycle assembly project. This project will be constructed using most of the same techniques that we've learned in previous tutorials and projects and we'll probably introduce a few new techniques you're unfamiliar with. As usual, we will begin this project with some layout sketches. The first two layout sketches will consist of a front view of the seat surface itself and a top view of the seat surface. The next two layout sketches will be a top view of the mounting rail that's mounted to the bottom of the seat and a front view layout of the same mounting rail. The seat will be constructed as a solid boundary that will be mirrored and shelled and then finished with some fillets on the bottom edges. We will use some techniques that we've learned earlier to make sure that these two surfaces blend together smoothly. After making the seat, we will make the bottom mounting rail by sweeping a round profile through a three-dimensional pathway. The path for this sweep will be constructed using a projected curve and also a 3D sketch. The rail will be mirrored and then blocks will be added to attach the front and rear of the rails to the underside of the seat. As a finishing touch, we will add a logo or decoration to one side of the seat that will be made by making a very shallow cut and then adding a color to this cut so that it will contrast with the surrounding surface. You will begin this project with a starter file that includes four sketch images. The first two images are guidelines that will give you the rough shape of the seat. It will be a front view guideline image, and a top view guideline image of the seat shape, and the other two images will be guidelines showing a front view of the mounting rail and a top view of the mounting rail. These sketch images will help to ensure that you will design your seat close to industry standard dimensions. This will prevent you from inadvertently ending up with a seat that's three feet long or three inches long. And speaking of inches, I'll just point out that you're going to be doing this project in millimeters, which is a typical measurement system used on most bicycle components. A typical triangular shaped bicycle seat will be about 270 to 280 millimeters long. A seat with a pointy tail will be longer, perhaps 300 millimeters. However, the widest part of the seat, where the pelvic sit bones rest, will be about 215 millimeters from the nose of the seat, regardless of the shape of the tail. The wide point of the seat will also typically be near where the highest point of the seat is located, although they do not have to be perfectly aligned. This high point will taper downward toward the nose and drop about 5 to 10 millimeters. Some seats will also be scooped out in this area to provide some additional comfort. The seat attaches to the seat post via a seat clamp the clamps onto the rails that are mounted on to the underside of the seat surface. All clamps are designed for rails that are 7 millimeters in diameter and are spaced 43 millimeters apart. When designing your own seat, you cannot change these dimensions or your seat will not properly fit the seat clamp when you assemble the final bicycle. When the seat is mounted to the seat post, the mounting rails will be sloping upward toward the nose at a 5 degree angle. This slope is included in your guideline images. If you decide to scan in a picture in order to build your own project, 
Make sure that when you insert the picture into SOLIDWORKS, that it's oriented in such a way that the rails in the picture are also sloped upward at this 5 degree angle. If you don't do this and you leave the rails horizontal, your nose is going to be pitched downward, which is going to give you some problems later on in your design and in your final assembly. This section of the rails is the most important portion. You can shift it up and down a little bit with respect to the seat, but once again, you cannot change this five degree angle. Also, where this rail begins and ends with respect to the nose of the seat should not be changed with respect to the layout guidelines that I give you, although it, it's okay if you have to stretch this out a few millimeters one way or the other, but once again, maintain that angle. On thin racing seats like this one, it's typical for the rails to be visible underneath the edges of the seat. On more cushy, comfortable seats, usually the bottom edge of the seat drops down a lot lower and pretty much visually obscures the rails when viewed from the side view. Now let's take a look at the guideline images that have been included in the starter file. The first two images are a front view of the seat and a top view of the seat. I've included these here together in orthographic projection. These are just very blocky representations of the seat that give you a rough idea as to what the overall dimension should be and the sort of envelope that you should be fitting your seat into. You can violate this a bit, you can go a little bigger, a little bit smaller, but it gives you the basic zone that you want to be in. The top view guide sketch just shows one half of the seat, but it does show the dimensions for a full seat. For example, a full seat would be about 140 millimeters wide, and the nose would be about 40 millimeters wide. The shaded yellow portions show an envelope for a typical triangular seat, both in the top and the front view, and this orangey extension shows the addition if you're going to be making a pointy tailed seat. The wide portion of the seat is typically about 215 millimeters from the nose, which is where your pelvic sit bones will rest. For racing seat, 140 millimeters wide is typical, but for a cushy, comfortable seat, you'll often find the seats are much wider. For a triangular seat, a typical length is about 275 millimeters. For a pointy tailed seat, a typical length is about 300 millimeters. The high point of the seat is typically about 215 millimeters from the nose, like the sit bones, but it does not have to perfectly align with the sit bone area, because this point can move a little bit forward or backwards. This 50 millimeter height for the seat is typical for a racing seat. And once again, a cushier seat that's more comfortable will be thicker or taller than this. The next two guideline images are the front view of the mounting rail and the top view of the mounting rail. And I've shown these together in orthographic projection, superimposed over the shape of the seat guidelines. The top view only shows one rail, but the dimensions reflect the distance between that rail and its mirror image twin that would reside on this side of the mirror line. Again, the key dimension is this 43 millimeter rail spacing, which must be maintained in your design. The other key dimensions to maintain are once again, this five degree slope on the rail as seen in the front view, and also the distance of the front point of the rail with respect to the nose, and the back point of the sloping portion of the rail with respect to the nose. If you have to change these a little bit, it's okay to change by a millimeter or two, but not much more than that. And again, it's okay to take this section here and shift this up and down as long as you're not changing the slope. Now, when you receive your SOLIDWORKS file, you will see that these images have actually been set to partial transparency so that you can see through them and see the superimposed images. So here we see, for example, the top view of the seat superimposed over the separate view of the rail sketch. And here we see the front view of the seat guideline superimposed over the front view of the rail guideline. This concludes part one, the overview of the project.
and in part two I will show you the actual process for building the seat. Part three will show how to build the rails.